Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and I uh, hope you enjoyed part one of this build where we actually put this cockpit together and here we now have part two and as you can see it's just like going back to the beginning of part one other than we have the seat already done with its belts in place. Now I was stupid, I stripped the seats and everything, I should have left the seat painted because we've now got to do it all again to build this up with the Edward set. So that was daft, wasn't it? But we've got all the parts here, all cleaned, all disassembled and ready to go. So this build, this part of the build or this cockpit build is not going to be all like, I'm not going to go into all the detail about the nose gear bay and, and how we're going to fill the holes in and all that because that's already done. Um, I'm not going to do any sort of information about PE and everything really unless there's anything specific that comes up. But this one, this part two, is going to be all about building this cockpit using the Edward set. And this is Edward set 321012. And as you can see, you get this colour photo etch panel here. It's not self-adhesive. I think they've stopped doing the self-adhesive, haven't they? Because it was never really very good anyway. It, it's tended to dry out after a while. Um, and then we've also got this fret here. Um, and it's not just a cockpit set, which is really nice. It's, uh, it's lots and lots of bits and pieces. These rings here, for instance, go on the engines. These bits here are for the guns. These little bits here are for the uh, nose gear bay, uh, for the doors. And these bits here are for the actual nose gear bay. So it's, it's a good little set if, you, if you're you know, restricted with funds and, that and you just want to upgrade your model a bit, take it to the next level. This would be a great little set to get if you can't afford anything else because it's got a lot of little bits and pieces in it. It's going to be a lot of fun to use. So we'll put all those bits aside a second. I hope you like this new green background. This is something I'm trying, um, which is rather than using cutting mats. So here we have the instructions for the Edward set. I've printed them out. You get, you get instructions in the pack and they're sort of folded over but they're smaller than this. So I print these off, off the Edward website. You can go and look at all their instructions and print them off. Um, so basically, first of all, what we're doing, it's showing you here what you get in the set. So you've got two frets. Um, it's giving you the, um, the legend there. So basically a black number like here, H10 is original kit part. And all these black lines here, it's all a kit part. Okay. Then the blue is a photo etch part. So you can see all this stuff that's colored in blue is all photo etch parts. The red means remove. So for example, here's a good one. You can see you've got this molded piece here, H35. It has these two boxes on it. What they're telling you to do is remove the, the plate that it's sort of molded onto and then put these separate boxes onto this new photo etch panel because they obviously feel this one is at a scale or whatever. Here we've got a replace, you've got the R there. So you're going to replace H10 um, and that means you're not going to use kit part H10. You're going to replace it with this folded up photo etch box here. And then green is fill. I'm not sure there is any fill in here, but uh, there we go. So as you can see, this first page is covering the inside of the right hand cockpit wall. So we're not going to be interested in that for this part of the video because we're not into the cockpit wall yet. That comes later in the build in step 12. So we'll look at that then, okay? Um, so we're not going. We're going to disregard that page. So page one, can go. Uh, page two is covering the other side, the left-hand side of the cockpit, with all our throttle levers and everything. Again, we won't be worrying about that because that doesn't come until step thirteen. Okay, so we'll look at that then. Um, and then down here, we've got, this is the bit we're interested in now, down here, we've got the instrument panel. So we, what you can see it's telling us to do here is take our plastic instrument panel, which is here. The part is F12. If you remember, this had a decal on it. It was all painted and everything. It's all been cleaned off now with IPA. If you haven't seen part one and you don't know about cleaning up parts, go and have a look at the end of part, part one. And I show you in there how to strip paint decals, everything off your model. Um, and also the uh, ultra glue as well. So... Here we have the kit part and it's telling us to remove a lot of detail from here. So we've got a lot of raised detail on here, you can see. Let me bring the light a bit closer. We've got a lot of raised detail on that panel that you can see there. Um, so we're just going to basically cut it, scrape it, sand it, whatever. 
What we are going to do first of all though is have a look at the air scale instructions because sometimes you have to be very careful with air scale. Um, on this one it's not the case but sometimes I know for example on the Lancaster there is raised detail on the instrument panel that you have to remove to glue back onto the instrument panel. So don't just come in with your sander and start sanding away. You may want to get in with a little razor saw or knife or something. Cut the detail off ready to glue back onto the panel. So if you are using air scale stuff always check first before you get the sanders out because sometimes it's the case you cut some raised detail off to glue back on. So we're okay with that one so we can just cut all this off. So and if you're not aware what I'm doing here is I'm building this now. I've built it standard. I'm now building it with the Edward set and then part three will be all about building it using the air scale set and that's the one I'm going to stick with and then we're going to move along from there and just go go through the build as per the instructions. So, um, so this part here we're interested in, so we're going to be doing that. And then this part here you can see, just this upper piece here, this is actually adding parts to the rear bulkhead. So we're going to be removing, it's the wrong side, sorry, that's the Bombay side. So we're going to be removing detail from here and adding photo etch panels. So we can see here we've got part 61, which is going to go on and replace this little raised debris here. We're going to replace that with part 61. So we can have a look at the Edward set. A big pile of stuff over here on my left. Find part 61, which is going to be on this sheet here. And part 61 is, where is it? I cannot see it for the life of me, part 61. We've got 62, 63, 61, there it is. So we've got this little part here, 61. That piece of brass there with all the raised rivet detail and everything is going to replace that simple plastic moulding there. And then we've got a lever to go in. So it's all going to become three-dimensional rather than just the flat plastic. So none of this is included in the air scale set. So we'll do this permanently and leave it on there, which means this time we're going to permanently glue the bulkhead onto cockpit okay so um so that's all the cockpit floor should i say uh, because basically we're going to be gluing this all together we're going to paint everything and then we're going to white glue the seat in we're going to white glue the instrument panel on and then when then we can strip it all again ready for doing the um the air scale set but i don't think at the end of this one i'll be stripping any paint so we shall see as you can tell i've got this really really well planned out <laughs> so not so um, anyway, so we're going to crack on now and we're going to look at what we're going to do using the Edward set. So this is going to be a kind of introduction for people that haven't used Edward sets before and what we're going to do and how we're going to plan and, and, and go around the build. So if you don't want to see this bit, if you're an experienced modeler, just press forward until you start seeing me gluing bits. So um, I'm going to get myself organised and I'll be back in a second. OK, so this is the way I go about doing this. There are people that will disagree. There are people that don't bother. There are people that don't need to. And there are people that probably do it even more intensely. But the first thing I do, if you've bought an aftermarket photo etch set, and believe me, Edward, make this easy. If you've got an aftermarket photo etch set, go through the instructions and make sure that you identify on here, on the instructions and on here, where the parts are going. Not necessarily exactly pointing arrows to say where they're going, but just a note to say that, you know, don't forget when there's a photo etch part goes on here. So that you don't just crack into the build. Sorry about the noise, that's Jess with a bottle again. You don't just crack into the build and end up missing it. So you end up completely building a sub-assembly, painting it or something, and then finding out, like for example, I've got that panel to go on that bulkhead back there. You know, you've completely messed up now because you've all you painted it all, it's all nice. Now you've got to go in and sand and remove detail, add a piece of brass and paint it all again. So that sort of thing. The other thing I always do is check for accuracy because you can see in here we've got like placards and stuff going on. I don't know where page one is. Page one we disregarded, didn't we? You can see on here we've got placards and things. So I've had a look and if we look at the air scale set... You can see that we have placards and things going on here, but they're completely different to what's Edward have got. So if you go online, you can find lots of pictures of cockpits of Havocs and stuff. I've got this wonderful book here by William Wolfe, 
it's many hundreds of pages thick and uh, it's it's a fantastic book for reference and it covers every single detail about the havoc there is. So in here we've got a, a, a section called Pilot's Compartment. So hopefully you can see this okay, it's probably be a little bit glossed out. But you can see we've got A20 model cockpit. So this is the old DB7 cockpit. And you can see there's no placard there at all. A20B cockpit, we can't tell. A20C and then A20G. And as we can see down here, we have red um, uh, placards. That's the word I was looking for. We have red placards on them. We have the same red placards down here, probably because it's the same cockpit. But we have to be very careful because this clearly looks like it's been restored. So we're trying to find original photographs of original cockpits, like this one here. Okay, but we can't tell what model that is because it doesn't say. So we can't be absolutely sure if that's an A, B, C, G, whatever it is. So you can see here we've got a DB7. And we can see on there, there's a big white placard look. And then when we look at this one over here, we can see here. We have an A20A and it's got a big white placard. And Edward, on that side panel there, have a big white placard. But the air scale set has a decal, which is a couple of red placards. So Peter Air Scale has gone with this here, which is a restored cockpit, which we have to assume is going to be okay. Um, and this one here, Edward, it looks like they've gone with an earlier model because I cannot see a picture anywhere online or anything of an A20G that has that white placard. Interestingly, they've both missed the placard on the control column there. So if you've got a spare decal or you've got some of the lovely air scale placards, then we can fit one on there because it's going to be quite obvious. You can see here again, and we've got all this stuff in here, but the trouble is it's all pictures of this restored cockpit. So... We don't know what to do, so all we can do is go with it. So there we are. We've got pictures here of that rear bulkhead next to the seat. You can see there's a sight level and everything there. So very, very cool. Um, <clears throat> very interesting. So if you're a rivet counter or you're into accuracy, or whatever, make sure you check your references because you could get sent up the garden path with some of these aftermarket sets. Just because it's an aftermarket set, don't ever assume it's 100% accurate. It's, it's as accurate as the guys that researched it or the information they had at their hand. Um, but personally, I believe this is wrong for an A20G. I stand to be corrected. If you know different, please let me know in the comments below. It could be that those red placards are only there because it's a restored model, a restored aircraft. Um, but the only pictures I can find with a white placard there are earlier versions, earlier than the G. So there we go. Um, <clears throat> so going back, so once we've done all our references and we've checked everything's fine, what we do is we get our instructions and we pick up our photo etch set instructions and we start to look at it. So we go through, go through the instructions and we've come to here. So what we can do here is we've got here, we've got remove. So we know that we won't go on and paint that until we've removed that, we've made a note. And then here we've got, I'm going to make a note here, PE. It basically means we've got PE going in in this step. And again here, PE going in in that step. All right. So that's basically showing us that we've got PE going in there. And we need to make sure that we, um, that we just, just make sure we look at our PE instructions before we carry on. Now H35... We can make a, I might PE there, I don't need to write PE. Well, that's a useless rubber, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> let me grab my eraser from here. So I'm going to write mod. Okay, so we're going to modify H35. And then part H10, we're not going to use. We cross that one out. All right, so that's the way I, I do it and go through the instructions and go like that. Now, believe me, as I say, Edward make this easy. There are some kits, there's some aftermarket manufacturers that literally just have a photograph and it doesn't even show you what the photograph is. If you go and watch Plastic Monkey's channel, he's doing a, it's a 
it's a bit by bit build now and again when he feels like it. He's working on Megami and he's got an aftermarket set, which I can't think the manufacturer now and the instructions are literally a joke. Um, they don't tell you that this gives you the part number um, and it gives you here like replace H10. These instructions literally you've got to guess what that is. It's somewhere like this you've got to guess that you're replacing it. You're not you know you sort of put the part and you think well how the hell is that going to fit over that part and it's like it should be obvious to you shouldn't it that you're going to replace it. It's just argh, it's really really frustrating. So um, it's worth doing this um, it's like if you look at Peter uh, Oscar Modeling's channel, he's just bought the London bus with all the aftermarket detail in it, as I have as well. And there's nothing in the instructions that tells you where any of it goes. So you're actually, you sort of, you need to make notes in the instructions, otherwise you'll go past a certain stage and you'll be beyond the point of no return and you can't come back and fit it then. So it's, it's worth making notes in both instructions to tell you where you're going. So I'm going to do that with this now and then I'll come back when I'm done. Now I just want to interrupt this build to make a small announcement. I have received a package here. This has come from one of my viewers. Okay, I'm not going to mention any names for, for uh, to save them any embarrassment. But I just want to say a massive, massive thank you. This wonderful, lovely, wonderful person has sent me a box and it's absolutely crammed full of sanders. Now, there's Flory sanders in here <clears throat> and there's UMP sanders in here. Now, I have never used a UMP sander in my life, so it'll be interesting to see what they're like. Um, as you all know, my favourite sanders of all are the Infini range. It's an anti-static cloth. The Infini range of sanders here, they're absolutely awesome and I love them to bits. Now, the, what's more special about than any, anything about this is these, some of these, in fact I think all of these, are no longer available for Flory models. This person has sent me all of these Flory skinny sticks. I am absolutely and utterly gobsmacked, so you know who you are, thank you very, very much. I'll be interested to see what these are like, because I've never ever tried them. Um, I very much doubt they're going to be better than Infinity because I think Infinity are the absolute much nuts. But what is nice about them, they're, they're, they seem to be all sponges instead of all being hard. But they've got these um, this funny shape to them, so we'll see what they're like. I know these these look to be quite hard. No, they're st they're all sort of soft, which is not good for some applications. But then saying that, this probably isn't their full range. It's a, we got these here, customizable sanding sheets. They're quite hard. So anyway, absolutely amazing. Um, I am gobsmacked. So you will probably see me using in this build, you'll see me using these, which are the Flory Skinny Sticks, which are the green ones, which I think they were called fine. Um, and I believe these were the best sanding sticks you could ever get for modeling. Uh, they, I just wish Infini would start doing them because nobody else has picked up where, the, where Phil Flory left off. And these are the UMP Ultimate Modeling products. And I've picked one of these out because it's 400 grit. And as you know, 400 is my favourite grit. So we'll see what this is like. Um, I mean, this is like a skinny sander. But slightly wider. And obviously you've got the wider end on here, which is handy. So we'll see what they're like. Again, they're, they're quite soft. Um, in some aspects, you need something like this. Like the Infini Zebra Sticks, which are hard. Um, for you know, for doing nice, if you want to like, remove sprue dips from edges like this, it's good to have a hard stick to give you a nice flat square edge rather than round all the corners off. But sometimes a, a sponge is good. Um, so yeah, so thank you very much. You know who you are, and I was absolutely gobsmacked to receive that. Um, it actually came a little while ago, and I completely forgotten to give them a shout out for it. Uh, and sort of slightly embarrassed in a way because I mean these are like gold dust so anyway let's get on with this build so uh, first things first instrument panel so we've got all the detail on here which is all raised and we've got to stick these photo etch pieces on and as you can see we've got this photo etch panel here which goes at the back and then this panel here is going to go over the front so you'll see the glazing through it Okay, so this has got your dials on it, and this has got your actual instrument panel. So what we're going to do, again, with this hard base, don't ever cut on a soft base. 
we're going to remove this panel from the fret. Again, I use a round blade. That way I can roll the blade over the over the nib and cut it away. Come on. Obviously my knife must be a bit blunt. It's only a brand new blade, I've only done a little bit of photo etch with it. And then this one here can come off. So we'll cut this one off like so. I'm not going right up to the paint on this one because I don't want to chip the paint off the edges. So that one's come off a lot easier. Okay, so we've got these two pieces now. So I'm going to pick this up and I can feel a sprue nib on there. So I'm going to use, I'm going to try this UMP. First time ever sanding with a UMP sander. And there we go. I know these did not come from UMP to me. I am not promoting UMP products. I am in no way affiliated, affiliated with UMP. Um, but I will give you an honest opinion of what they're like. And on the back here, what I'm going to do is just score this up a bit. Just to give the glue something to bite onto rather than just that shiny surface. So... Get that down on there and just give that a bit of a bit of a sand. And I'll do the same on this one. So we'll get rid of those nibs. And don't worry about the edges. What I always do with these PE panels, I always go around the edge with some black paint to get rid of the shiny edges. But we need to be careful that we don't actually remove any paint from the front face because that can look a bit odd. And also be very careful, one of the issues with pre-coloured photo etch parts is when you have to bend it or fold it, particularly seat belts, the paint can just flake off. I don't know if Edward have improved things, but um, if we get very carefully sand, just put some marks in the back of this to give it a key for gluing. And as you can see when I do that, it sort of slightly curls it up so you can just flex it back straight. Go on that one slightly curled as well. What you can do, put it down on a on something soft and just push the ends and that should help you to straighten it out. Okay, so basically that has got to go on there. And you can see it fits perfectly on the edge. Okay, it fits perfectly up to the edge, like so, and we've got that engraved line in there, so we're going to get a gap. Right, so there we are. That's that. So that's going to go on there beautifully. Right, so what I would recommend we do is remove all this detail from here and paint this black first. Um, maybe even do some of the green as well because we are going to see, you can see underneath, in fact I'm going to paint it green, not black, because it would have been green. You can see underneath here we have, there's an area where the photo etch doesn't cover down there. And we're also going to have a gap between the panels, so we'll probably paint it black first and then mask off the black and paint it green. What is that stuck to my finger? It's a bit of tape. Go away. You are not required. Right, so um, I need to get on and get some painting done. First of all, we're going to remove the detail, aren't we? So with a pair of cutters, I'm going to cut off all this raised detail here. Okay, let's get these structures out of the way so we're not whiting everything out. So I'm going to remove all this detail from here. Got to remove all of the raised detail so none of it gets left behind. And then here we're going to be using the, when we do the air scale set, we're going to be using the Anise switches and stuff. So what I'm going to do here is with my knife, I'm just going to very gently cut away. And the reason I cut this away is so that when we come to sand it, now that in there is going to be a separate panel. It's funny, I seem to remember painting these knobs yesterday. Can't have done because it's all grey plastic. Hey-ho. 
Um, the reason I'm doing this is because otherwise when you sand it, you end up with rounding all the corners off because your sander is riding over all the knobs. So I tend to cut them all off first. And then you've got a relatively flat surface to start with. There we go. So, is this going to be coarse enough? I think I might use the skinny stick actually, the coarser side of the skinny stick. I just very gently, I'm not ploughing in, I just want to gently remove the raised detail. So I'm just letting the sander glide over the surface. Just like so. And then the same up here. I think we've got quite a lot of raised detail in the middle there. So I'm just going to grab my knife and just scrape that away. We'll scrape most of it away so that we don't end up rounding because what we'll end up doing is, is rounding the corners off if you know what I mean in fact I think I'm going to use my Infini 400 stick here the Matador because it's flatter as I say I'm just very gently sanding I'm not going going in deep see now that panel there is slightly raised I think it is so If you can hear some screaming in the background, it all depends on the wind direction, but there is a school not that far from me. And if the wind's going in the right direction, you can hear all the kids in the playground. And uh, I don't know what they get up to, but it sounds like they're um, murdering each other. <laughs> they can half scream. So there we are. So that is pretty much that. Okay, now if you want to, you can put some black magic marker on there just to check that you've got it all nice and flat. But um, really, as long as it's kind of flat, then it's going to be okay. As long as it's flattish, you've got rid of you know all the obvious raised detail, all the knobs and buttons and switches and all the bezels. So there we go, and I need to come up inside there, and I think I'm going to have to scrape that. Just remove that knob detail on there. something to be aware of that panel there <clears throat> that panel there is higher than that one and that panel there is higher than the surrounding so just don't like I say don't go plowing in with your sanders as I say let me know what you think of this background guys I, I think it's great if you don't like it I'm going to have to stick with it for a while because I've bought 10 sheets of it. So. There we are. If enough of you say you don't like it, then, uh, then I won't do it. I'll get a different colour next time. Perhaps if you say you don't like it, but please, instead of just saying I don't like it, suggest a different colour because the concept of having a piece of paper rather than a cutting mat I think is uh, much better. When we need a cutting mat we can just put a cutting mat down. Right, so I think that's done. So what we need to do now is look at getting this painted. The other thing I need to look at, if we look on the instructions you can see here they've also got this corner coloured in red for us to cut off. Well, when we look at the part that goes on there I think it's 13 isn't it? Yes, 13. That part there is going to fit up into that corner, that part there. And as you can see, it's a lot smaller 
than the actual instrument panel. So the shape of the instrument panel, Edward are saying, is incorrect. I think what I'll do is I will probably glue that on and then sort the instrument panel to fit afterwards rather than, uh, than risk messing anything up right now. So basically that is going to fit onto there, butt it up to that line, but it will level with the edge. That's going to glue on there, but we're going to get it painted first. So I'll see you back in a minute. All right, so much for me saying I plan everything. Slight change of direction. Um, I've decided that I'm going to prime everything with black, with black paint, because um, I want to get some primer down. Because this could well be the final um, layer of green paint that goes down. Um, so what I like to do, as you know, if you follow my channel, I like to build sub assemblies so I'm not actually gluing painted parts. So my intention is, is to get all the photo etch parts that aren't pre-painted glued on and then prime over them. Um, so I've removed all the detail required from this rear bulkhead, as you can probably see there. It's all been sanded off. I go a little bit careful. There's, there's a row of rivets here, and there's some rivets over there. You need to get make sure you get around them. The, per, the finish doesn't need to be absolutely perfect because you're going to be covering it up with photo etched panels, as you can see here. So the intention is is to put the panels in. All right, let them dry, and then I'll drill and put the levers in afterwards. Um, I may prime it before I put the levers in. I shall see. But what I need to do is once again mock this all up in the fuselage just like I did in part one, so we can get this angle, the relationship between here and here, the same, that will correct, um, and then we can go from there. Um, the other thing I want to do on this one, I didn't want to do it last time because I wanted to be able to lay this down and, scrap this, and scratch this detail off. That's why I didn't fit this in part one. But now we're going to fit this, glue it, make sure the seam's all good, get this on, this armour plate, make sure the seam's all good, get that in, do all the seams underneath. So there's a lot of work to do which I'm probably going to do pretty much off camera because you've seen me do it already. Um, and for instance, like this lever here, they're telling us to remove. As I said before, I'm going to keep that because I'd rather have a nice round knob than a flat one. Yeah, I did say that. Um, and we've got this lever here. Where is it? That angled one. Where's that one gone? It should be here somewhere. I don't see I've lost it. I have. I've lost it by the look of it. Um, but there's an, there's an angled lever that's going to go in. I have, I've lost it. I could easily make another one. It's just a round rod uh, that's going to go into this bulkhead. So um, there we go. In fact, it's probably sitting in the bottom of the IPA. There it is. It's in the bottom of the IPA. I doubt very much if you can see it, but it's in there. I, I used a syringe to get that thinners out. I may be able to get this out again with a syringe. Let's see. Uh, not a syringe, a pipette, sorry. Let's see if I can pick it up with a pipette. Oh dear. That's not interesting watching, is it? So um, anyway, I'll do that in a minute. I'll get that out. That's going to be properly uh, depainted, isn't it? Degreased. Um, so I'll get that out and that's going to go in there. So in the meantime, I'm going to get these off. I've sanded the back of them already. I'm just going to literally cut them off and I'm going to glue them on. And for gluing them on, I am going to use VMS Black Fin, which is this one here, Flexi 5K CA. The reason I use this, it's black, you can see where it goes, you can mop it up, you can see where you've mopped it up. Um, it doesn't dry instantly, and when it does dry, it's a very, very good bond. It's not all brittle like normal CA glue. So we use some of that, and I'm going to get these pieces glued on there. Hey then guys, a little bit of progress has been made. I've fitted those uh, panels onto that onto that um, bulkhead as you can see there. Okay, so the camera can focus. Come on camera, focus, there we are. Now, on the PE fret, they give you these tiny little levers and I've got one here. I hope I can show you. I hope you can see that. <laughs> it's a tiny little photo etch lever. What it's supposed to be is a lever with a ball on the end. Well, I don't like this. In, 40, in 72nd or 48th, I mean, you can probably get away with it. I don't like it. So what I do, I replace it. And this is a piece of um, 0.33 nickel silver wire, if you can make that out. And then I've got the ultra glue, and I've just put a ball with a matchstick on the end. And you can probably make it out. It's, it's dried clear. 
when it's painted with we'll a ball on the end like a proper handle and I'll do this with all of them even if I use the photo etch handles I'll always put a ball on there and the air scale ones um, if there is in fact a ball on the end of the handle I'll check the references first because some throttles have like a, a circular disc almost like an Oreo cookie on the end um, but some will have a ball so you'll have a lot of the Second World War British stuff they have a lever coming up a lever coming out like that and a lever coming out of that and they'll all have a ball on the end and they're generally painted white and red um, so yeah that's what I do and, and, and it just looks a lot better I think than having this two-dimensional flat piece of brass it's the same with these ignition wires here you know it's great that Edward give them to us but they never look right in 30 second scale. I may use them because you can't really see a lot of the engines anyway unless you remove some cowling. But um, it's far better to use wire, especially on the big stuff. And you can see we've got all these knobs, all these levers here on the fret, all of these here. You know, we'll, we'll need to replace all them as well. Um, so I've basically replaced these here. And where are those little ones? These here, 63, I've replaced them. And then these here, 54, these go, I think these are a canopy latch or something. Um, and I'll probably replace those as well with wire and, uh, and, a, ball of, um, and a ball of glue. So there we are. Um, that is now the undercarriage is held into the fuselage with a peg, as you can see. Then the floor is taped to the undercarriage. Then I've glued this sparingly so the glue doesn't get onto the undercarriage bay roof. And then I've also glued in this piece here, which we didn't fit before. So I'm going to leave that for a few hours now to dry, go hard. And then we can get it out and maybe buttress it up with something. I don't know. Because um, at least that, that, that joint there particularly is going to be very, very weak. And uh, I'm also going to fit this armour plate on the top and the support at the back. Deal with the hole that's going to be left underneath. And then we're good to go with some black primer and some paint. Okay, so there we go, as promised, everything is primered now, and I've done this with the MRP Fine Surface Primer Black. This is, in my opinion, the best primer on the market. Um, it's absolutely amazing, but it's the best primer for things like this. When you've got fine rivet detail, fine photo etch and everything, and you want a primer that goes down really thin and doesn't sort of hide anything, MRP is awesome for larger areas. Mr. Surfacer is absolutely fantastic, like a you know a, a truck chassis or a, in any scale truck chassis, car body, um, car chassis, you know, bottom of boat, whatever. Mr. Surfacer all the way because MRP is very very thin, and you you know to do a three fiftieth ship hole, you probably use practically all the bottle. So that's the problem with it. It doesn't go very far, um, but as a primer, it's tough. It pulls down really smooth. I mean, you can see the finish on there. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And when you look at the seat, you know, when you can see it on those, all those rivet details in there and all the photo etching and everything, it's, it's just beautiful. It really is very, very nice stuff indeed. It really is nice. So, um, yeah, lovely. Uh, so we've got everything now primed in black and we're going to do the green. Talking about the green... If you have a good memory, you remember from the review and from me talking afterwards that we have in the instructions, we have M, which is yellow, green, tinted zinc chromate, RC262, which is the real colour, okay, which is this one here, which I talked about before, RC262, okay, and then we have here, they're giving a suggestion. For Mr. Hobby, they're not given an example, but I'm going to show you in a minute, they do have a, a, the, 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 the correct colour. And then here, what they're saying, a Tamiya mix, which is X45 and XF11. So here's X4, sorry, XF4. And here's, it is, I just wonder if it said X4 then. Um, XF4 and XF1. So five of those to one of those. Okay, so that's basically the mix they're giving you to make that colour. So I've done that and I've got this colour. And that colour looks considerably lighter than where I've painted it on there. I think I'm going to have to do another sample. But basically, um, the interior of aircraft is a subject that a lot of people get very, very hung up on. Um, in the early days of World War II, 
pretty much everything in America was painted with zinc chromate. Now, zinc chromate is not a colour. Zinc chromate is a paint. And it had some salts in it that came from a, some sort of zinc. And they were like a yellow colour. The paint was translucent. So if the paint was painted on something dark, it would be a lot darker than if it was painted on something light. So hence, if you see aluminium, which has been, which is like a craft of 99.9% .9 made of, you'll see it painted with zinc chromate yellow. It will look very, very yellow, very much like this. Okay. If you see it painted on something darker, it will change shade. Now, what they found was that Cockpits were done with zinc chromate and it was a little bit too bright. So what they decided to do then was do cockpits with the green colour. And all they did, they added some lamp black to the... So that's what this is. Okay. So they added some black to the yellow and it made it darker. So what I've done here, I have four paints on here. Now this is the Tamiya mix. So this is my sample of these two mixed together. And as you can see... That's the jar there, and it does look a lot lighter. Now, obvious, some paints darken as they dry, some paints lighten as they dry. So I'm going to do another sample of that and see how it dries. I'll do another sample sort of right next to it, overlapping it or something, and we'll have a look tomorrow and see how it looks. This is the AK Real Colors um, interior yellow green. This is the SMS interior green. And this is H58, Mr. Hobby, H58 US interior green. And as you can see, they are all different colours. Now this is where the photo etch comes into play. No matter what aircraft you do, if you're doing something German, you have to match the interior grey. And this is one of the problems with pre-coloured photo etch. You can see all this green on here. We really need to match that because if we go and do the cockpit in the AK colour, when we put the, 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 the panels in from the Edward set, you can see the difference in colour there. It's, it's a hell of a difference between that green and the green underneath. And you can see on here the mix, it's slightly darker. You can see with the SMS, the SMS is a lot darker. But when we get it next to the H58, you can see the match is nigh on perfect. But I'm not sure H58 is the right colour for an aircraft of this period. But what we can do, we can mask this and paint it knock it back a bit. It'd be easy to mask this and paint it and knock it back. It'd be not so easy to mask that, but we can actually just have a little play with some very, very thin paint and just knock it back a bit so that we can use the AK real colour because I'm convinced that that colour for this aircraft would be more correct. I think if the H58, the later interior green colour, was right, I think that they would have recommended it in the instructions. Now, when it comes to your Bombay and wheel wells and all that, you can sort of make your own mind up what you're going to do. But here in the cockpit, we really need to be trying to match this. So that's what we're going to do. I may just go for the H58 and make life easier for myself. But looking at this, I'm kind of looking like maybe this will actually be okay. Now I've given it a really good shake. In fact, what I'll do is I will do on camera. I don't want to get any paint on my new paper mat, but what I'll do, what I've done is use the end of a... Yeah, I think it is the same colour. We'll have a look at this tomorrow. I mean, it's quite late at night now. But we'll have a look at that tomorrow when it's dried. But it does look a bit lighter before it dries. It may dry darker, it may dry light, lighter, who knows. But um, we'll have a look. And the reason I've done this by doing that thick splodge rather than spraying it on is I don't want the colour underneath to affect the colour of the paint. So I want a nice thick splodge on there because that will give you a true colour of the paint. So we'll see how that dries. Uh, we'll have a look tomorrow and quite possibly use that. I mean, looking at that there, it is slightly darker, but it looks like it could be... I could always knock it back a bit. I could put some more yellow in it and get it to sort of pretty much match that. But um, I'm certainly, for the rest of the aircraft, I think I'm going to use the AK Real Colour because people get all wound up with this subject and you don't need to. Um, there are pictures of aircraft interiors with different colours of green because th there are times when the 
because they had instructions to mix the paint and they were told to use zinc chromate and then add so much of lamp black or this other rubber colour black. And sometimes the instructions were misread and they put both blacks in so you had a very, very dark paint. It also depended how thick it was sprayed on. It depended on the mix ratio, how good they were, how much black they had. If they only had a little bit of black lying around, they'd probably half the amount of black they put in. So really, to get wound up about the green colour is not really the thing to do. All I can say is I have read documentation that basically sort of later late, later on in the war, sort of 42, 43, they kind of moved away from the green, the, the yellow, and moved into the green. Now, don't get confused with B-17s, B-29s. Uh, I think B-26s as well. Um, they used a colour called bronze green, which was a much darker green. And, and um, P-47s, they used this bronze green, which was much darker green. Had a bit of a sheen to it. So then they went for a colour called dull green, which was matte. You, you can read all about it and just read it to the cows come home and believe what you want to read and believe what other people say. But we can see already that's drying and it is drying darker. So I think what I'll probably do is put a drop more yellow in it just to knock it back a bit. And then we'll have a slightly darker cockpit than the rest of the aircraft. And it'll be a little bit interesting. So um, I'll see you tomorrow now. And, uh, and we'll get this painted green and get some photo etch stuck to it. Good morning, next day now. Right, so what I did last night, I did add some more of that green, um, sorry, some more of the XF4 yellow to this Tamiya mix. And I've got that kind of shade there. You can see it's slightly lighter and it's more like the H58 now. So I've used that on the cockpit and painted the seat and painted in the belts. I haven't done the buckles yet, but uh, you can see the seat with the buckle, the belts painted. And I always think the belts look nicer when they're painted actually on the seat. I just, I don't know, it just gives it all a look of togetherness instead of being separate parts all glued together. I don't know, it's nice. Uh, we've done the control wheel. I've, I've got a feeling there should be um, material wrapped around there, but we'll have a look. I may be repainting all of this anyway. And I've done the black gaiters in there. I need to check the references. I've got a feeling the pictures I've seen with black gaiters are, re are restored. So it could be that in wartime... They were actually leather. In fact, they probably were leather, so they should be brown. And we masked off the instrument panel, the black bit, and painted the green down below. This is all going to get stripped again, because obviously when we do the air scale, we're going to be modifying this and bringing it all forward and everything. So um, that's basically that. I'm going to let that dry now, because I don't want to be handling it. Uh, something of interest, if you look on that rear bulkhead, you can see now, those knobs where I replaced the photo etch pieces you can see the knobs with the balls on the end and we'll obviously get them all detailed in and everything uh, I'm not really sure how much fuss to make of this this time whether I'm going to strip it or not I don't know um, but uh, we shall see we shall see I mean the whole idea of this is to show the Edward how to fit it and how it all looks when it's done and how to sort of improve the look on those gauges and stuff so um, I'm going to let that dry and then I'll come back and uh, we'll see where we go next. All right, so there we go. We've got the belts repainted again. And I doubt if you can see it, but I've actually done some post shading on the seat. I've just gone round with the airbrush and just with the slightly lighter green, just gone round and just gently faded it in. You can probably see it better on here. You can see around the sides of the seat. It's slightly lighter than the colour in the middle. And it just sort of gives it a bit of interest. You can also see I have done some research and those panels in there were in fact leather or suede or whatever. So they're redone in like that tan colour. So I'm really happy with that now. And you can see I've done some of that shading around the back. It just adds a bit of interest to the, to the look. I haven't done anything to the instrument panel because obviously I'm going to be stripping that once we've got the Edward set on there um, and changing the angle and everything. Um, I've had a comment from a guy um, who commented that he felt that the, um, where is it, here it is, he felt that the rudder pedals were too far away from the seat. And I have to be honest, I thought exactly the same thing. So I got my little pilot out and if we put the seat in place, just drop the seat into position like so. Go on. There we go. That's in position now. Looks nice, doesn't it? Um, it's a lovely little kit, this. When you think that, it's pretty much out of the box. 
um, other than those levers on the behind the seat, which you can't really see. So it's very nice. Uh, but I put this. Um, this is a from a Hasegawa one thirty second style scale Stuka, um, and you can see there that actually they're not too far forward at all. I mean, he sat on his parachute, which isn't the best. But oh dear, 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 dropping everything. Um, just put this back in here a second. But you can see clearly that, I'm trying to hold it sideways so the camera can see it. You can see clearly that the actual rudder pedals are not too far forward at all. Um, you know, he's, he's sat there with his legs bent. I'm guessing, I'm guessing the pilot figure is correct. I mean, it's Hasegawa, so it's, it's going to be pretty good. But uh, yeah, it's it's fine. But the instrument panel, the, the problem with this kit, in case you haven't seen part one or any of my reviews, the problem with the kit is the instrument panel is too far away from the seat. When you put the control column in, you can see here that basically, if you look at A20s, the control column must have a very small amount of movement because the control column is very close to the instrument panel. You can see there, it's quite a gap between that. So the whole, the control column needs to be angled back rather than angled forward. So what we'll do is we'll cut some of that lug off on the bottom and allow it to go forward a bit more. Um, and the instrument panel needs to go that way by about six millimeters. So it's going to be very, very close, but it's going to look a lot better than it does. I don't really know what's gone wrong having said that i cannot find a nice drawing you know that shows a sort of a see-through image if you like of the position of everything so i'm guessing the guys at hk models were struggling and just had to do the best that they saw fit with what they had and um what i'm going to do is when i do the air scale set i'm going to reduce or yeah reduce this angle bring it closer to zero if you like um, and what i'll do is i will I will remove some plastic from here, remove some plastic from there and allow that to come back further and then move the whole thing forward. So uh, that's what we're going to do there. Um, and obviously remove some plastic from that, uh, from the back of there to allow the control column to sit more vertically as well. But uh, we're not doing any of that yet until we've done the Edward set. The Edward set is going into a standard cockpit. Okay, so um, so as I say, we're going to let all this paint dry and everything, and then we'll push on with some Edward bits. Okay, so here's the bit you've been waiting for. So we're going to look at getting this um, instrument panel all glued on now. I've forgotten to get my white glue out, so uh, we don't want to go with super gluing this to there because we need to take it off again. So I'll start off by just quickly talking about tools I'd recommend for doing this. These tweezers here, these are the Nice um, Super Precision Tweezers. I absolutely love these things because they are, they've got a very, very sharp point. I mean, they're, they're, they're sharp to the point of being dangerous almost. Um, but the beauty of them is, is they don't flick things sideways. And if I can try and show you, here's a, you know, you're picking up a rod like this. Okay. And you can squeeze it and you can squeeze it until the tweezers are actually closed. And that's the beauty of them. If you take a cheaper pair of tweezers like these here, and you squeeze, yeah, it's not going to do it, is it? It's not going to do it. it. It will do it with smaller parts, I can assure you. Um, but what happens is, is as you squeeze, it will kind of, they kind of go like this and they, let me find a piece of wire or something here. Then. I think it will do it with this. I'll come here. This little wire here, this little wire clip. If I squeeze the tweezers together, you see it flicks it out. Um, and what it will sometimes do is flick it sideways. Yeah, and it's not doing it because the camera's on. The beauty of these is you can pick stuff up and squeeze them and it won't flick it out. It won't do anything. They're really, really good. Um, and they're very sharp pointed, so they're really good for small parts. And they've also got a very, very gentle, you know, hardly any pressure to keep them closed. So that's really good for picking up small parts. 
The other thing that's really good for small parts with photo etch, uh, now I've done a couple of bits off camera, and I'm going to show you what I've done, is on here there is a tiny little raised red area. I've added that, and then on this one, don't worry, I'm going to show you the instructions now. On this one there is a disc that's added to the front. And what I've done here, I had this part in my hand, I had I put a drop of super glue on the part, and then literally, you watch this, you can pick the part up and put it down. And all this is, you can buy these special pencils and all that, and, but this is a China graph. So look for China graph. Um, and we used to use these at Rolls-Royce for actually marking machines. So you've, if you were roughing something out, you would put a mark on the index and you knew you came to that line. And, and that was it. So this is a white one. You can also get black ones. Um, but they're absolutely brilliant for picking parts up. You can see, I mean, that's a bit big really, but if you press it in there, yeah, it'll still pick it up, look. Um, it, if you press it too hard, it will leave a slight deposit behind. You can see there. You can see on there, there's a little white dot. I can just wipe that away. Um, Ron Calvary actually uh, did a test with this about having wax deposits left on your model, but he, he, I, don't, I don't know what the outcome was. I don't think he used the correct pencil. To, be, to you know, I think he probably did in the end. But, uh, you know, Ron loves to do his tests and... Uh, so there we go. So I did those off camera basically because I have to do them with a magnifier. Um, so the rest of this we can do without the magnifier. So we can do all this on camera. <clears throat> so I've basically done that part there. So that part there was folded in half and put on there. And that disc there has gone onto there. Okay, so that's that. So we can cross those out. They are done. So what we're going to do now is fit the main instrument panel fascia to the back. Okay, so... This is basically going to glue on here like I showed you before. So we're going to line up the edges. Now if you look at it, you can see that we are actually going to be gluing photo etch or metal to, um, to paint. So it may well, if the paint isn't adhering very well to the metal, which it's probably not, we may end up with um, it peeling away. So what we're going to do is just scrape away some paint. It's actually sticking very well, this paint actually. They've obviously changed their formulas, uh, which is good news for those with belts, because sometimes belts can be um, a bit difficult to bend without the paint peeling off. They've, it looks like they've changed their formulas. So a couple down there, and I'll just do a bit here and a bit here. I just want to make sure we've got metal to metal adhesion. And then what I'm going to do is get this together and get it positioned perfectly into place. Okay, so that's lovely. Right, just like that. And then I'm going to hold it with a pair of tweezers. Ow, a pair of wide tweezers. I just pinched myself then. And I'm just going to hold it in one area. And then with some thin super glue, I'm just going to let that wick into the gap. I'm using the thin clear because it's quick drying and that's what I want in this occasion. I don't want to be hanging around. Now you can see on there I've got a bit of excess on the front. We can just quickly wipe that away. You need to be quick because it will actually attack the paint even though wiping the paint off. It's not a big thing to go and touch it up afterwards. So that's that corner done. We can come to this area down here. I'll do the same in this corner here. Get those sellotape together. Sellotape, super glued. Let's call it sellotape. So that's that corner done. And then we did something up here, didn't we? Oops. So we'll just mop that one off. And then we did something on this corner here. So that is them glued together. Right, so that's them together, nice and flat, everything's good. What I tend to do now, just so it doesn't have, it doesn't matter so much on this one because it's underneath the combing, but sometimes you can see the edge of the panel and rather than have this laminated look, I like to come around with the super glue, go all the way around the edge, 
let that capillary in and quickly wipe off the front face to remove any glue from there. And then just let this glue capillary in and it will kind of seal it all in and it will make it look like one piece rather than, than two. Okay. Just go along the bottom. There we go. Now that is now firmly glued together and what you can do is just push it down on a hard surface just like so. And there we are. Now that is ready to be installed onto our instrument panel just like so. Okay. So we can work on the rest of the stuff now ready to go. So you can see this one here this needs to be folded. You've got this, this piece sticking out on the side and as you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, they've got serrated lines on there rather than rather than having a, a bend line. It, it allows you to fold it right over because sometimes with photo X you can't physically fold it right over. Now I'm not going to bother removing the paint on here. I may regret it. But what we need to do is try and bend this by hand rather than use tools because we don't want to scratch the paint. So we can bend that back by hand and that's gone over and that's lovely. If you notice I haven't put any glue anywhere because I don't want the glue to ooze out. So I'm going to gently squeeze that together and then I can come in with the super glue and just touch the corner and hopefully it will capillary into both areas because we've got two areas there where we've got a join. Just mop off the excess. And I think that's that done. Okay, no it's not. So what I'm going to have to do is come in here with the super glue, lay it in there and quickly wipe it off. I'll do some underneath as well. Just lay that in and quickly wipe it off. You need to be really quick wiping it off because the super glue will attack the paint. You don't want to be removing all that lovely printed on detail. So there we are, that's staying flat now. You can see that's staying flat. It's not um it's not lifting away when I take the tweezers off. So just hold that, let that dry, and I'll be back in a sec. Alright, so that's nice and dry now, so we can start getting these panels glued on. Now, I'm going to use white glue for this. I'm going to use the Migamo Ultra Glue, purely because I want to take it off again. If I wasn't taking it off again, I would be using super glue. Um, I don't want to use, I know I could easily peel it away with super glue, but I might want to use these panels on another project. Watch this space. Um, but I, I want to keep these nice and flat if I can, so I can easily remove them hopefully once they're on there. Um, the other thing to remember, if you've got an old set of Edward and it's self-adhesive, glue it as well. The glue on the self-adhesive is never adequate to actually, you know, firmly hold it in place. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just put some small drops of, of this glue on here. I'm trying to, I'm thinking actually I may as well use super glue because I can't soak it in alcohol because it'll ruin the Edward printed paint. So it's a bit of a tricky one really. Um, there we go, we just place that into position, move it around and this is where the black, the VMS black thin comes in good because it doesn't dry instantly. That glue there, that's called the XT thin from VMS and that stuff is, um, it dries instantly. Which, which is something you don't want. So that will hopefully stay on there. Okay. Do you know what? I'm really tempted to get a small drop of super glue on here just to hold it because it's not going to stay in place. Hmm. I'm going to put a tiny drop of super glue on this top edge. 
and a tiny drop in there. And just hold that down. And hopefully that'll be enough just to hold it. And hopefully when I come to take it off, because it's on top of paint, it will just peel away. There we go. That's in position there. Okay, so that's that one on. And then we've got this one here to the side. So again, I'm going to use a tiny drop of super glue. And if I ruin it, I ruin it. So the thing is, I... I I don't want it all moving around while I'm trying to do the rest of it. That's the trouble with white glue is it takes an age to dry. So that one can go on like that. Just like so. And then we've got one going on here, which is there. And it's going to require that I remove part of the instrument panel. But I've been thinking I'm not going to do that because, let me get my tweezers actually. Because if the air scale set wants that piece of panel left in place, then I don't want to remove it. But that's basically going to sit there like that. So you can see now we've got this instrument panel coming together and it's all looking very nice. Okay, then down here we have a drop there and a drop there. You probably wonder why am I not using the VMS black? Because I've got this stuff out and I don't want to stop the camera. And this needs to be just flattened out a bit because it's a bit curved up. It often happens with photo etched, you curl up. And there we go, that one's there in place. So that's gone down lovely and then on the side here just a couple of drops we'll pick this one up Let's move our tweezers away from the glue and then place that one down on there just like so so you can see that once all the painting and all the cleanup and everything is done this is actually quite a quick process more glue on here because it's not quite playing ball. There we go, that's that one on. It still wants to curl up. Bloody typical because the camera's on, it's playing up. Just hold that back in a sec. Okay, so there we go. That's our instrument panel basically done. So that is what you get out of the box. Now, if I were keeping this in here, I would go around the outside edge now with some black paint um, to get rid of that. You can see there's a bit of a metallic edge. It doesn't really matter in this case because it's going underneath a combing, so you're not going to see that edge anyway. And also, if you look here, Edward are asking us to remove some plastic from here. So obviously the instrument panel is incorrectly shaped in that area. Um, I'm not going to remove it in case the air scale hasn't got that bit done. Um, it could be that Edward are incorrect. Who, who knows? We'll, we'll have to have a look into that. Um, so that's all that all glued on there. And as you can see, you get quite a nice effect. I'll put some photographs up at the end uh, so you can see the complete cockpit. But um, this is kind of the best you're going to get when you're looking at photo etch pre-printed um, instrument panels. If you want better than this and in some respects easier than this, you can go for the, um, the 3D printed versions. Like you get the ones from well, Edward and then there's the, um, what's their names, Quintus Studios. 
and you've also got the Red Fox ones. Now, Edward, I know, do one of their instrument panels for this, so, you know, we might have a look at one of those in another build in the future. But um, this is about as good as you're going to get with pre-printed photo etch. What you could do now is give it a matte coat if you want to have a matte finish on there and then go over the dials. But as you can see on here with the photo, with the photo etch part, you do get that sort of con convex surface on there, which is, which is a shame, which you can't avoid. Um, it's, it's part of the process. So I've done some detail painting. I've done these knobs on the back as to what I think they should be. And I've done these bits down here to what I think they should be. I need to do some more research to check what's going on. This here is correct. These ends are silver aluminium fittings and this is a sight glass for the hydraulic oil level. What I've done, I've painted it brown. I, should, I shouldn't have gone all the way up, should I? I should have just gone up to there. Um, but now you can see those, those handles on there and those knobs. It all looks quite effective. Um, if you want to use the photo etch parts, obviously go on and use the photo etch parts, but they're so bloody tiny and the trouble is they're flat. So I, I, I always like to replace stuff like that with wire and I will do the same on the latches and everything on the sides. Throttle levers, unless they're, unless they're actually made flat, which they normally are. Um, these two bits here go underneath. So this one here is going to fit into here like so. Okay, and this will be sort of part of the Bombay. And then this one here, I'm looking at where the flat is. The flat goes towards the cockpit. So that's going in there like that. So those two bits will sit in there like you can see. Okay, um, but I'm not putting them in yet because I'm not convinced on the colours. Um, I think maybe one of these tanks would have been black. Maybe that would be silver. And then you've got all this round here as well. So I'm going to do some research and have a look. Because obviously we've got the Edward Bombay set. It's going to look lovely. <clears throat> and I don't want to be detracting from this. Because there is a hole. in There's a bulkhead goes here. And there's a hole in it. You can see all that through there. So um, we want to do that as best we can. And get some washes on there and stuff. I haven't done washes on here or anything. Because it's not what this is about. This is not about finishing the cockpit off. This is about using the Edward set. Compared to the, the kit parts. Um... So there we go. So let's get this together. <coughs> Excuse me, frog in the throat because the camera's on. So the first thing I want to do is put the seat in. I think I can put the seat in without any glue. I think it'll stay there. Um, I don't want to glue it in if I don't have to because obviously when I do the the next cockpit build, I'm going to be using the air scale seat. That will stay in there, I think. So you can see there I've painted the belts and the buckles. And now you can see those knobs down the sides and it's all looking sort of pretty dandy. Um, we'll get some glue in here for the control column because let's get a fresh cotton bud actually. Just wipe that away from the top there because I want to modify this control column so it goes further back when we do the final build. If you want to see the final build that'll be cockpit build number three and it may well be in two parts because otherwise it'll be like a two hour video because all the air scale stuff is quite complex we're going to be using a nice buttons and dials and switches and stuff and um yeah we're going to be going mad so it's going to be uh it's going to be a very interesting build for part three build number three so we've got some glue on there so we can glue this instrument panel in like a so. I've put the glue on the wrong side of the... Where's my glue? I've put the glue on the wrong side of the hole there. Let's get a bit more on there. Just hold it in place. Get that glued in like so. There we are. That was difficult. It was really difficult to get in. I what was going on there. So um, there we are. Right. So that is our Edward cockpit done. So now you can see the only difference in here from the kit. We've got the kit seat belts. They're painted. We've drilled out those holes in the bottom of the seat. 
we've got the Edward panels on this bulkhead here and then we've added wire and glue blobs for the knobs okay and then we've got all the Edward instrument panel stuff there so you can see now the difference you get with the Edward instrument panel and everything compared to the kit parts go back and look at cock build, build number one and you'll see the difference in having this and the decal obviously these panels here are a massive improvement over the kit because there's not a lot of detail on the kit especially on this side um, but over here as you can see here we got this panel we've got this panel here okay um, on the kit there's all sort of bumps and dolls if you remember on there but the 3d pan the, the, the 3d the photo etch panel is just flat so that's not really good so that's where your 3d printed stuff comes in better or what you can do here where you've got these dials at the bottom at the bottom of here you can see the rings where the dials go you could add the anise knobs and buttons so you know you if you if you can't get anything more than this for your model whatever it is get the anise dials and switches and buttons and toggle switches and all that and add that to the photo edge and really make it come to life you need to bring it out towards you add some buttons and stuff and I'm going to be doing that with the air scale set um, it has all the holes ready there if you put the wire in we'll put some toggle switches in we'll do we'll, we'll do a lot of work on that one and um, it'll look a lot nicer than this but it takes a lot more work that's the thing so it's all down to how much time you want to spend when this is at the end of the day all going to be closed up like that and you're hardly going to see any of it because it's all like that so um oh, it's just started raining so uh so there we go so i'll put some photos up at the end uh, and you can see how it looks but um i think it looks great compared to the out of the kit um with these knobs and stuff on the sides it looks much better doesn't it so um thank you for watching i will see you all soon for part three i don't know how long away that's going to be because i want to do some research because i'm not happy at all with all these red knobs and levers everywhere i'm not sure that it would have been like that in real life and i'm also now doubting myself on the red stencil data whether it should be the white or the black or whatever i'm going to have to do some more research um there is lots and lots to look at but you have to be really, really careful because it would appear if you move, you know, A, from the DB7, the A, the B, the G, <laughs> they're, they're all um, a bit different. So, and it also does look, from a picture I saw, it does look like these are perhaps too steep. Um, they maybe should be more like this. So we're going to look into that as well and bring this forward. So, and the control column needs to come back. So there we are. Right. Thank you for watching. I'll do some photos. I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.